I'm Steve G. Jones, clinical hypnotherapist, and I'd like to tell you about hypnosis. First, let's talk about common misconceptions in the world of hypnotherapy. A lot of people think that under hypnosis, you can be led to do anything that the hypnotherapist wants you to do. That's not true. Under hypnosis, you will not do anything you wouldn't ordinarily do. Another common misconception is that you won't be aware of anything on during your hypnosis session. This also is not true. Let's for a moment examine the different states of hypnosis. First of all, where we are right now, well, where I hope we both are, is in beta, beta, normal awakening consciousness. In beta, your mind is fully engaged. You are awake. You are fully alert. If you slow down just a little bit, like when you're driving a car, watching TV, reading a good book, working on the computer, then you're in what we call alpha, alpha. Have you ever driven a car somewhere and arrived and not remembered the trip? That's because you were in alpha. You slowed down just a little bit. It turns out that in that state, you're up to 200 times more suggestible. So, all we really need to achieve is alpha, during which you may very well be aware of everything that's said to you. But rest assured, those powerful messages are still going to your mind and still having an impact on your life. Have you ever been in a classroom where the teacher drones on and on and you find it difficult to keep your eyes open? You are drifting into alpha. The next step down is theta. Theta. Theta is the state you're in when you can be woken up pretty easily. Someone can shake you and wake you up. But it would be not too easy to disturb you with a sound or something. Below that is delta. Delta. This is the deepest state. This is the deepest state of sleep and the deepest state of hypnosis. The stages of hypnosis correlate to the stages of wakefulness and sleep, by the way. In delta, we could actually amputate a limb without you feeling it. To achieve delta, what we need to do is induce you into a trance, bring you out, induce you into a trance, bring you out, and do this about 10 times until we basically wear you out. Then the surgery can be performed. This is not common. Most hypnotherapists do not perform techniques like this in a surgery room, but it does happen. What we want to focus on, though, is getting you up and running in hypnosis. So we want to make sure that you can achieve at least alpha, at least that twilight state, where you're between wakefulness and sleep. For example, when you just wake up in the morning, you're in alpha. You're not quite awake, but you're certainly not asleep. When you're falling asleep at night, you're in alpha. You're in that twilight between wakefulness and sleep. As I mentioned, in that state, you're up to 200 times more suggestible. The only difference between this and that is that, first of all, in hypnosis, we are causing it to happen. And the other big difference, we're putting positive suggestions in the person's mind while they're in that state. Careful, when you wake up or you go to sleep, when you watch TV during that, you could be getting those suggestions in your mind. Don't want to cause an undue alarm, but that is a scientific fact. So what we want to do is get the person into hypnosis, into at least an alpha state. Now, a lot of schools of hypnotherapy talk about ways to get someone into a deeper state and monitor that state to figure out which level they're at. In my personal opinion, and in my school of hypnotherapy that I run, I do not teach this. I believe that a person will at least be an alpha, and it's not necessary to monitor their state so closely. As long as we've achieved alpha, which is very easy to achieve and maintain, we have a very, very suggestible person, and we can make positive changes in their life. During the initial session with a client, the hypnotherapist should spend approximately one hour interviewing them to find out what is important to the client. The hypnotherapist should also take time to explain the hypnosis process. Given the information supplied by the client, an appropriate treatment plan can be developed. I see here that you're also interested in motivation. Yes, absolutely. I'm working on a project and I, I could really use some help in focus and motivation for that. 
Great. One of the main things I work on with people is motivation, whether it's exercise or a project. A lot of times I work with actors to help them just kind of pump things up a little bit. So I'm very well versed in the dynamics of motivating people. Great. Your goal should be to have the most productive hypnosis session possible. It's important during the initial meeting to establish a rapport with the client and help them feel at ease. The more relaxed they are, the more effective the hypnosis session will be.